Hello everyone. In today's class, we are going to study about concord in English grammar. What do we mean by concord? Concord basically means an agreement. It's an agreement between the subject and the verb. It can be an agreement between the subject and the complement, agreement between subject and object, and also an agreement between the subject and the pronoun. Now, what do we mean exactly by this word agreement? When we studied tenses, we talked about how the form of the verb changes in order to, in order to uh, show the time of action. Similarly, in order to communicate sense, we need to look at the number of the subject and we need to make sure that the verb or the complement or the object and pronoun matches this number of the subject. So that is what we mean by agreement between subject and the verb. So in the sentence, Tom likes chocolate. Tom is a subject and it's a singular subject. And the verb that comes there is also a singular form of the verb, likes. Because we have a singular subject, we use the singular form of the verb. Similarly, if you want to uh, know how this agreement happens between subject and complement, you can look at the next example. Children are angels. Now, if you remember in the previous class, we talked about subject complements. Subject complement comes in the position of the object, but it is not exactly the object. It only adds meaning to the subject. So in the sentence, children are angels, Children is a plural subject, so we used a plural verb, are. And here again, because we have a plural subject, we use a plural form of the subject complement, angels, the plural form of the word. Similarly, there should be an agreement between the subject and the object. Suppose uh, in the case of reflexive pronouns, uh, if the subject and the object are the same, we need to use the apt pronoun. So in the case of the next example, he injured himself, we have the same subject and the same object. So here we need to have an agreement between the subject and the object. Next one, there should also be agreement between subject and the pronoun. Look at the example. The boy has been playing cricket. He is tired now. Now here the boy is a singular subject. So when we use a pronoun to replace that noun, we should also use a singular uh, noun, sorry, a singular pronoun in order to represent the boy. So the boy is replaced by the singular pronoun he. So that is what basically uh, concord is all about. In English grammar, we have a lot of confusion with regard to the subject verb agreement. Subject complement agreement, subject object agreement, uh, subject pronoun agreement, all these uh, are quite naturally easier when compared to subject verb agreement. Now, we're going to look at certain rules in order to make this Concord, this idea of Concord or the application of Concord in English language easier. Let's move into the rules. So as we said before, the verb in English changes not only with reference to time, that is as in the case of tenses, but also with reference to number. So if we have a singular subject, we use a singular verb. If we have a plural subject, we have a plural verb. Look at the examples. The child likes toys. Children like toys. So the child is a singular um, uh, subject and it takes a singular form of the verb. Now, what do we mean by the singular form of the verb? In a singular subject, there is no S with the subject. But in the case of a singular verb, a singular verb is formed by the by adding thus to the verb. So it comes with an S. So the child is singular with no S. 
and likes a singular verb with an s because it's a combination of does and the verb like similarly children like toys now children is again a plural form of the verb we know that there are irregular plurals which um, are words which do not form um, its plural form by adding s now children is one such word but we know that children is a plural subject so we use the plural form of the verb which is actually a combination of do plus verb and it is without an s let's replace children with boys boys like toys now here boys the subject has an s with it and in the verb form we do not it does not take an s because it's a combination of do plus verb now moving into more details of concord <clears throat> the first rule you need to remember is what we said before a singular subject takes a singular form of the verb a plural subject takes a plural form of the verb now the second rule is if we have two or more singular or plural subjects joined by the conjunction and they are considered as plural and we need to use a plural form of the verb without an s look at the examples jan john and bob walk to the store now here jan john and bob are three singular subjects combined by the conjunction and and so we use a plural form of the verb do plus walk similarly here come the ci and the few policemen so here the order is reverted the subject has come after the verb but doesn't matter still we look at the subject here the ci and a few policemen now here the ci and a few policemen two um, one singular subject and a plural subject are combined with and and still we use a plural form of the verb come which is do plus come the next example the crowd grew so muddle headed that good and bad music alike were greeted with shouts now here good and bad music now here you have good music and bad music combined together with a conjunction and and so the the rest of the verb okay the rest of the verb which um and the rest of the sentence which takes the good and bad music as a subject takes a plural form of the verb were greeted moving on to the third rule if a subject is modified by the words each or every that subject is singular and will take a verb form that ends in s that is it takes a singular verb form so in the example each boy and girl walks to the store now here we have two uh, subjects boy and girl combined with and but there is a modification to that to that uh, subject there is an addition of a word each there so whenever we add words like each or every in a sentence that subject becomes singular in nature and we use a singular form of the verb so each boy and girl walks to the store similarly every student the subject student is modified by the word every and because we have every we use a singular form of the verb every student is expected to wear id card similarly every member of the crowd of 2000 people was dissatisfied with the performance on the stage so every member of the crowd of 2000 people it doesn't matter uh, whether the subject is singular or plural but if you add the word every or each before that singular or plural subject it always takes a singular form of the verb every member of the crowd of 2000 people was dissatisfied which is a singular form of the verb similarly every man woman and child who came here is to blame because we have every we used is there moving on to the next uh, 
sorry moving on to the next uh, slide next rule uh, the indefinite pronouns are usually singular and they take a verb form that ends in s or that takes a singular verb form if you remember what indefinite pronouns are we did that when we were doing pronouns indefinite pronouns are uh, pronouns which do not refer to a, a particular thing there are in uh, we we have learned about the indefinite pronouns uh, anybody either neither one anyone everybody nobody somebody anything everyone no one someone each everything nothing something these are all indefinite pronouns now if any of these indefinite pronoun becomes the subject we always use a singular form of the verb okay so look at the examples everyone walks to the store everything comes back eventually so because we have used indefinite pronouns as a subject we use the singular form of the verb walks and comes moving on to the next one if the subjects in the sentence are joined by or nor or but the verb must only agree with the subject that is closest to it now this is something important you need to remember the second rule that we said before was um, if the subjects in a sentence are combined by and the verb is always plural in nature but if the subjects in the sentence are joined by the words like or or nor or but the verb will agree the verb will for, uh, take the form of the subject that is closest to it let's look at this example either bob or his brother walks to the store so we have two subjects here bob his brother which are combined by the word or now here we look at the word the subject which is closer to the verb and we take the form of the subject that is closer to the verb so his brother comes closer to the verb walk his brother is singular so walk will also take a singular form which is walks look at the next example we again have the same two subjects here bob and the second one is his brothers now they are combined with the uh, with the word nor neither bob nor his brothers now here the subject that comes close to the verb walk is his brothers which is plural so we also use a plural form of the verb so remember if the subjects in the sentence are combined by the words like or or nor or but the verb will always fall follow the form of the verb form of the uh, subject that is closest to it look at the next example not bob but his brothers walk to the store not bob but his brother walks to the store the next one neither the stage attendants nor the manager was able to control the crowd now here we have two subjects the stage attendants and the manager because manager is close to the verb we use the singular form of the verb now if the order is reverted neither the manager nor the stage attendants then the verb would change to where because the stage attendants come closer to the verb stage attendants is plural so we also use a plural form of the verb where similarly neither my brother nor i am interested in this now here i uh, is a pronoun whose verb form is am in the in the uh, present tense so that's why we use neither my brother nor i am interested in this if you revert the order neither i nor my brother is interested in this that's how you change the agreement similarly the next example it seemed that either the poor arrangements or the lack of space was responsible for the situation so you look at the subject that is close to the verb if the subject is singular 
you use a singular form of the verb. If the subject is plural, you use the plural form of the verb. Now, this is in the case of subjects combined by or, nor, or but. Moving on to the next um, rule. The subject of the verb is never in a prepositional or verbal phrase. Therefore, you must isolate the phrase and find the proper subject. Look at the example. The mother duck, with all of her little ducklings, walks to the store. So here, mother duck and whatever follows after that subject is a prepositional phrase. It's a phrase which starts with a preposition. So the mother duck with all of her little ducklings, we eliminate this with all of the little ducklings. We still take the mother duck as the main subject and the verb will follow the main subject. So the mother duck with all of her little ducklings walks to the store. Mother duck is singular in nature, so we use the singular form of the verb. Similarly, the mother duck, including all her ducklings, walks to the store. Here again, it's a prepositional phrase, so we use the mother duck, which is singular. Uh, we use a, a singular form of the verb for the singular subject. Let's see if you can uh, find out the reason for the next one. The auditorium, as well as its premises, was crowded with people. Now here, the auditorium is the main subject, as well as its premises is the prepositional phrase. So we still look at the main subject. We don't look at the subject that is close to the verb. That happens only in the case of the previous rule. When you have or, nor, or but, you can look at the subject closer to the uh, a verb and use the form of the subject for the verb. But here in the case of prepositional or verbal phrase, you only look at the main subject. You look at the first subject and follow the number of the first subject for the verb. Look at the next one. The man, except for the fact that he smokes, is well behaved. Now it's a verbal phrase. Okay, but here the man is a singular subject, so we use a singular form of the verb. I hope that is clear. So remember three things. If subjects in a sentence are combined by and, we use a plural form of the verb. If the subjects in a sentence are combined by or, nor, or but, we use the form of the subject that is closer to the verb. In this case, if... Um, the subject in, of the verb is followed by a prepositional phrase, is followed by as well as, or except for, or from, or in spite of, with, without. Okay, if it follows this, if the subject follows any of these phrases, you will always look at the main subject only and follow the form of the uh, subject for the verb. Moving on. Some indefinite pronouns and nouns will be singular or plural depending on the object of the prepositional phrase. These words are always about number or amount, such as all, half, some, none, most, part, etc. Now, if any of these words come along with the subject, we will look at the subject and use the form of the subject for the verb. Look at the examples. Some of the students are gone. Since we have the indefinite pronoun some here, we look at uh, the subject students. Since it is plural, we use the plural form of the verb are. Similarly, in the next example, some of the cake is gone. Now here again, we have the indefinite pronoun some along with the main subject cake. Now here, cake is singular, so we use a singular form of the verb, which is is. Next example, none of the students have written the exam. Now here, none is the indefinite pronoun that comes with the main subject, students. Students is plural, so we use the plural form of the verb, have. 
Similarly, a part of the movie was shot in the college. A part again refers to uh, one of the indefinite pronouns. A part of the movie. So the main subject here is the movie, which is singular. So we use the singular form of the verb also, which is was. Next rule. When there is a collective noun, such as family, group, committee, or class as the subject, it can be treated as singular or plural, depending on the context. We should prefer the plural verb where the personal individuality within the group is meant. And if we look at the group as a single unit, we can use a singular verb. Now here, what is a collective noun? A collective noun is a noun in the singular form which represents a group. For example, family. Family is not one individual, but it's a group of individuals, but family is a singular subject. Similarly, group. Group is a singular form of the uh, subject, but it includes a lot of people in it. Similarly, for committee or class, such words are called collective nouns. Now, what do we use? What kind of verb do we use along with collective nouns? Now, collective nouns can be singular if we look at the noun as a whole. If we look at the noun as a group, we can look at it. We can use a singular form of the verb. But if we are referring to the individuals in the group, then we must use the plural form of the verb to represent. Look at the examples. The examples will make it clear. The committee has unanimously chosen Martin, its secretary. Look at the next example. The committee were divided in their opinion regarding the election of their president. Now here, what is the difference? We have the same co collective noun committee. But in the first one, there is a word which suggests that the, the committee, the everyone in the committee stood as a group. That is the committee unanimously chose Okay, so they didn't have any uh, any different opinion regarding that. And they unanimously chose Martin as their secretary. So when you use the collective noun here, the committee takes a singular form of the verb because the committee is referred to as a single unit. But look at the next example. The committee were divided in their opinion. Now here we, we have used a plural form of the verb because the committee here is not a single unit there is no agreement between the members in the committee but there is division so we are referring to the individuals there so we use the plural form of the verb and remember when you use a singular form of the verb any pronoun that refers to this collective noun should also agree with it for example in the first one the committee has unanimously chosen Martin, its secretary. Here we have looked at committee as a single unit. So we've used a single singular form of the verb and also a singular pronoun. But in the next sentence, we have looked at committee not as a single unit, but we are talking about the differences in opinion of the people who belong to that committee. We are referring to the individuals in the committee. So here we use a plural form of the verb. The committee were divided in their opinion. Look at how the pronoun has changed here. In their opinion regarding the election of their president. I hope that is clear. Let's look at the next example. The audience was restive and it greeted the singer with boos and catcalls. So here the audience is looked at as a singular unit. Now the audience were restive. They greeted the singer with boos and catcalls. So in the second one, we see that some of the audience were restive, but some were not. So in such cases, we use a plural form of the verb to represent the collective noun, to represent the differences of um, opinion among the members of the collective noun. Next one. My family, with all of my crazy cousins, always walks to the store. Now here, we have two rules coming together. My family is a collective noun. Okay, my family is uh, family is 
referred to as a single unit here. Now, with all my crazy cousins is an addition to that sentence, addition to that subject. So here it's a prepositional phrase. So we will look at the main subject, my family. So my family uh, is considered as a singular unit here. That's why we have used a singular uh, pronoun, sorry, singular verb when we refer to that collective noun. Moving on. The phrase more than one, if it comes as part of the subject, it is usually treated as singular. So we use a singular form of the word to refer to that. For example, more than one attempt, more than one attempt. Uh, by sense, it means multiple, but then here we refer to it as a singular one because the phrase more than one is always treated as a singular uh, reference in English. So more than one attempt was made. Was is the singular form of the verb we have used. The next rule, a few nouns like um, economics, mums, measles, or news, they all end in S, but they're not plural nouns. They are all considered singular. So we can use a singular form of the verb, even though uh, they look like a plural word. If you look, if you just try to take away that S from it, it does not make sense. It is actually part of that word. It just looks plural. So such words uh, are used in singular form and it takes a singular form of the verb. Now, when the subject is a unit of measurement of time, distance, money, weight, etc., the unit is considered singular and the verb will end in S. For example, 10 pounds of chocolate. Now it's a unit of measurement, pounds, how much ever it be. Okay, it, uh, we need not look at the number, but if you use uh, a unit of measurement to refer to the subject, you can always use the singular form of the verb. Similarly, 13 feet of kite string. Kite string is the main verb, main uh, subject here. And 13 feet is an addition to that subject. Because it is a unit of measurement, we use a singular form of the verb. In a next rule, uh, in a question or in a sentence that begins with there or here, the verb will often come before the subject. It will be plural or singular depending on the state of the subject. Now, where is my sweater? Now here, my sweater is the subject. The verb is has come before that, but it still follows. It still is in agreement with the subject. There are my sweaters. Now here, there is again um, another uh, example for this. We look at the subject, my sweaters, which is plural. So we have used the plural form of the verb, are. Next one. We've heard of gerunds. What are gerunds? Gerunds are verbs, uh, I'm sorry, gerunds are nouns which look like verbs with ing. Now gerunds can also be subjects at times and they follow all the same rules above. Look at the example, running with ducks is my favorite spot. Now here running is a subject, running with ducks is a subject and it is, since it is singular, we use a singular form of the verb. Similarly, running to the store and flying through the air are my favorite spots. Here again, running and flying, they are both gerunds. They, are, uh, they, they take the noun form, they are the subjects. And uh, because we have two subjects coming together, we use the plural form of the verb. Moving on to the next one. When using who, that, or which, you must look at uh, the noun, you must look to the noun these relative pronouns are referring to in order to determine whether the subject is singular and will have a verb ending in S or is plural and have a verb without an S. It's easy. 
if you find a relative pronoun anywhere, just look at the noun that comes just before the relative pronoun. If that noun or if that subject is singular, you can use a singular form of the verb. If that subject is plural, you can use a plural form of the verb. Look at the example. The girls who eat cake are happy. Now here, who is the relative pronoun? And who refers to the girls? The girls is plural. So we use the plural form of the verb eat. Similarly, the girl who eats cake is happy. Now here, the girl is a singular subject. Who is the relative pronoun? And eats is a singular form of the verb. Similarly, it is I who am to blame for bringing in these people. Now here, who is the relative pronoun? And it refers to the subject I. So because we have I there, we use am, the corresponding form for the verb. Now, in sentences where there are two appositives for a subject, use a singular form. Otherwise, follow the general rule for plurals and it is important to recognize whether it is an appositive or not. Now, in the previous class, we talked about appositives. What are appositives? Appositives are uh, extra information that you get about a subject. It usually follows a subject and there is no linking verb between the subject and the appositive. If you look at the example, uh, next example, Mr. John, the manager's son and deputy manager of the company was seen talking to the troublemakers. Now here, the Mr. John is the manager's son and he is also the deputy manager of the company. So here we are referring to a single, single, single person and a singular subject, Mr. John. So we use a singular form of the verb was. Look at the next one. Mr. John, the manager's son, and the deputy manager of the company were seen talking to the troublemakers. Now here we have um, Mr. John, who is the manager's son, and the deputy manager of the company. Because we have added the word the, because we have added the article the before deputy manager, it means that uh, it is a different person. It is not Mr. John himself. So these are two different people. And so we use the plural form of the verb where. So we discussed a few rules of the uh, subject verb agreement in today's class. So main things you need to remember here are when there are when there are subjects connected by certain conjunctions, you use different rules to uh, identify the form of the verb. So please uh, go through the lecture, go through the classes, uh, go through your textbook once more, and um, you will have your exercises in the classroom. Thank you.